Looking for somewhere to copy trade that offers only the highest quality of certified traders vetted by a team committed to helping traders become successful? Diablo is that platform, offering rigorous risk management by setting maximum drawdowns for their platform's traders. As with real trading rooms, traders are followed by a person called risk managers during their incubation period. So there's no need to worry about what traders you follow on Diablo.io. So visit Diablo.io for more information on participating in their open beta. This my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis, who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis, yeah. Hola, hola, buenos dias, GNGs. I am Tracker 2 ks and this is my two Satoshis, brought to you here on CBTV. If you don't know, now you do. And so basic idea, if you don't know and you're new to this, is I cover some crypto stories and some non-crypto stories, and I try to, you know, make this middle ground of how these things might relate to what's going on in your life. And that's me adding my two Satoshis in on it, right? And so we're going to jump into these stories right now. This first one, these aren't going to be like the most up-to-date things, but it is X amount of a recapping or trying to bring some correlation to some things that might be happen happening currently as you're hearing it, right? So this first one here, crypto stories. Solana goes dark for seven hours as bots swarm candy machine NFT minting tool. And so this is... Oh, uh, what? Beginning of the month when this happened, the basic idea was Solana went down again. If you have not been paying too much attention to the NFT side of things, it's a lot of trial and error experimentation going on right now, which is something that those of us who've been around long enough know, like, this is what the space is. If you're just getting into it right now, you know, Solana is is arguably seen as like, Solana is, is the streets. And this is where X amount of the Hey, what happens in the streets happens in the streets, right? Solana was touted or is touted by X amount of the, the believers in this thing as it's going to be able to deal with the scaling and, and the, the gas fee transaction stuff better than Ethereum. Solana has not been around that long and this still happened on like the beta test net stuff, right? The main beta test net, right? And the basic idea was it was basically a over a flood of transaction requests that happened on a minting tool site that is used within the Solana ecosystem for people who are looking to mint like the 10,000, you know, print NFT projects or the cars or whatever it is they do. The point being is that hackers figured out, hey, if we do this, hmm, what happens? Now, the way that I'm looking at this is Solana is still going through its growing pains. For those of you who are the fan people of Solana, it is what it is. I got you. You know, it, it does cost less now for gas fees as far as minting and transactions and stuff like that. But it doesn't mean that it's going to always be like this. Case in point, this situation. This wasn't as bad as the September setup where it went down for 17 hours, but it's still annoying. And if you are, uh, let's say, a, not a meno or a guppy, I don't know which one is necessarily bigger, but like if you're not whale status, but you like around there somewhere, and even if you're at whale status, for real, for real, this can be kind of annoying. But if you're at whale status, arguably, you know that this is all trial and error and experimentation. The point of where I'm going with this is that, yes, Solana is a viable option right now, but it's still in its testing phases, right? And with that, and I've been saying this also for a couple of months now, like I feel like there's some level of coordination or something going on in like hacking circles where there's different types of like tests and things that they're doing to mess with the various smart contract enabled blockchains. This happens to be one of them. Um, in preparing to restart the validators mold, whether to implement code that would temporarily block candy machine transactions, some debated on Discord whether such a move constituted censorship. Regardless, it would only be effective if two thirds of the validators opt in. So there's a reason why I read this. If you were here in the prior to the 2017 period, you understand that this is very similar to a situation that Ethereum and Ethereum Classic was born out of. The Ethereum that we know today that everyone follows because Vitalik is on it, that is not the original Ethereum. The whole phrase of code is law comes out of that situation right there. And Ethereum Classic is actually the original Ethereum, but everyone, not everyone, most people who didn't understand X amount of the technical stuff, as well as those who did, followed Vitalik 
because he's the per the head figure, the personality uh, magnet that is pushed ahead as like, here's the central figure for Ethereum. Even though Ethereum, as we know it today, is not the original Ethereum. That goes into what this scenario is for what Solana is dealing with and like, hey, do we do this thing? Which also goes into the, the how centralized is that layer one? This is an example of there's X amount of centralization, even though it might not be at the, we can stop everything. They're still able to do something that would limit transactions, block transactions, freeze transactions, arguably the same thing, maybe even reverse transactions. This goes into that thing of the blockchain technology and its various uses or various variations of uh, two viewers, right? It's not a one size fits all, or it's not a one absolute tech. It's a sliding scale of how far to centralize versus decentralized are you? Arguably, this shows more and more that Solana is very centralized. There might be layer two elements that are built on top of layer one of it that have X amount of more decentralization, but it doesn't mean that the layer one isn't centralized. That's the core part of it, honestly. It's what's going on on the back end that is more, to me, important to understand how far left or right of central, being centralized versus decentralized a project or a blockchain protocol actually is. Just wanted to throw that one out there. All right, jumping into this next one. This story right here is actually an opinion piece, and I've seen this the other day too, and it made me think. And what I thought was also interesting, David Z. Morris, like, claps to you for actually bringing this up about how, and I, I've really been coming to this observation a lot more of late, that what we see happening in the crypto space as far as the financing use case part, the money, the monetary stuff, this is all experimentation and how do you combine a technology that you can put out into the public and then you stand back and you watch what people do to innovate, create, exploit from a positive or a good end, financial instruments. That is what we're seeing happening right now. And people are taking X amount of what they learned from Wall Street and how Wall Street is regulated and how Wall Street uses high frequency trade machines, how Wall Street does X amount of things. And they're like, all right, now let's bring it over here with this newer technology that allows us to do X amount more and let's see what happens. So in regards to this story in particular, what David is talking about is this guy was the head of Archigo's capital management, and he basically borrowed a shit ton of money, and then he was leveraging it into the stock market and stuff. And this is the same thing we see in the crypto space. Like, the similarities of behavior and personality types from traditional finance to Wall Street daddies and all that, it's over here in the crypto space as far as we got the Wall Street kids. They here, right? And they're running off of the same mindset and... <laughs> and it's funny, the same narrative is being um, um, shilled out like, oh, you know, we're, we're bringing innovation and we're, we're doing this for the people and we're being altruistic, blah, 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 inclusion, inclusion. But the mindset, though, is still the same thing of we trying to make this money. Now, the links for all of this will be in the description on this. But the bottom line is like the dude borrowed a shit ton of money. He ended up doing some crazy leveraging into certain stocks and stuff. Case in point right here, it was 10 different stocks roughly. And this also goes to that part about like the transparency side of how traditional Wall Street and stuff works versus what's going on in the crypto space where it's public ledgers. It's, it's you, anyone can go and look at an explorer and understand how that works, right? And so we have the same thing playing out in the space. And David was making the comparisons of the behaviors of this particular gentleman who ended up getting arrested He's serving X amount of time because he got convicted of doing the stuff. The question was, was it outright fraud? And I'm going to say it this way. There's a recession happening in this country in particular I'm focusing on. I'm here in the U.S. I'm here in the States. Recession is happening. People who have access to capital and money, they see what's up. So they trying to fill up their bags and be out before it gets publicly acknowledged. And that's how I'm saying this. Before it gets publicly acknowledged by governments, 
and federal agencies that will then start saying, yes, blah, blah, blah is going on in the market. This is the situation of where, what was it? In Q1, we went negative. A recession is technically where two quarters go negative. Arguably, depending on what metrics you were actually using, we've been going negative for a couple of quarters. Again, I try to play it, pay attention to the smarter people than myself. And these are the things that I hear and I correlate it to what I'm seeing in front of me within the crypto space, as well as what I understand the traditional markets. This is not a financial advice. This is just me, some guy on the internet saying, there's some things that I see going on that I question and I'm trying to throw it out there to y'all in the public. It's not just about the crypto folks. This is just a bigger thing in general. Like the economy is having issues. We're seeing people who have access to money do screwy things. And then the trickle effect that comes down to those of us in Main Street, it is what it is, man. Like, and not to say like, oh, it's just all good. No, it's not, it's not. Because at the end of the day, the people who work for his company, they lost their job. The people who were in the other companies connected to what he was doing, somebody got fired somewhere. Granted, nobody but him went to jail, but like, this is the stuff we see going on in the space now. And it is a thing. Case in point, look what's going on with Terra Luna, that whole over leveraging stuff and how it's supposed to be pegged. Like, and a matter of fact, that's the other part of what I wanted to touch on real quick before I jump to this next story. That is what he was actually ma like making a comparison to because David was talking earlier about that as far as Terra Luna. And then here we are middle of the month and you see what the hell's going on right now with Terra Luna, right? Yeah, so jumping into this last story. Shout outs to Steve Leto. Like I found out about him a couple months back. I want to say like last year is when I started picking up on his stuff. And he's a lawyer dude. He covers some really interesting stories of various types of law cases that come across his attention or at least people in his viewership like bring it up to him. He was talking about this situation right here. Every ISP in the US has been ordered to block three pirate streaming services. Now, when I seen it, I was just like, wait, what is going on right here? How is this a thing? Let me read the blue line. A federal judge has ordered all internet service providers in the United States to block three streaming services operated by DOE defendants who never showed up to court and hid behind false identities. First part to understand here is the companies, and these are actually the companies right here that I don't understand how it is that these companies that aren't American companies that are based out of, you see the country, right? How did they come over here to go to the New York district, Southern district court to be like, hey, you need to enforce this copyright infringement for these pirate companies, this pirate company is doing this. And then you need to hold like everybody accountable in doing this. Steve brought up a point about, well, how do you list X amount of companies but then you don't actually like the, you're still in how this order is being put together saying that the companies that aren't listed in this are also responsible. This is where you have the thing of people who have authority or influence making rules or making decisions on technology that they don't understand. This is where we also come into the question of web two versus web three, where we talk about how decentralized is the infrastructure that makes this internet thing possible, right? Can we just shut it off with a switch? Is that what the ISP providers will have to now do? Even if you weren't connected to any of the streaming that these pirate channels did, what does that mean? I would argue that the bigger thing is how much money was, were these companies losing in, I would argue, advertising that they went this far to be like, all right, we got to go to the States and get this copyright infringement thing going. There's a number of things within this that I'm just like, the, the, the situation <laughs> is going to blow over a lot of people's head heads, but this plays into the crypto space too, because we're talking about EVMs and we're talking about blockchain based websites. We're talking about web three and you being able to have the power of uh, uncensorable domain. What does that mean to a judge who still only understands or hopefully understands web two based domains where you say to an ISP provider, you have to be the police guard. You have to be the security guard and fix this and cut stuff off. But if that's not within their wheelhouse, technically speaking, then what is the point of this judgment? 
Now, I'm not giving it all a full scope and review. Again, the links for this will be in the description and you can definitely jump down this rabbit hole for yourself. But this is definitely a thing that does matter to the space and it will become more apparent as we push into this decade is where I'm going to leave that. Last thing being is this is the channel and I know that how I break stuff down might not be coached with everybody. And for those who do value what I'm saying, I appreciate giving a thumbs up, giving a share, telling a friend, it's all good. But if you don't, you can give the thumbs down, you can give a negative comment. Either way, I'm still good about it and I appreciate the interaction nonetheless. Also to throw out there, we are working on some things in the background because there's some conferences coming up. There's some things that we're going to be getting to do giveaways and things like that. And so we throwing it out there, giving people the heads up that, hey, pay attention, check in on the episodes to understand how you could probably catch us or you could probably get one of the things that we're giving away. Nonetheless, uh, I am Trek with two Ks. This is my two Satoshis and pretty much that's the end of it, y'all. One. Ooh.